Hello, my name is Sean Guidry, and in this video, we're going to demonstrate the linear dead tank transducer known as the LDTT300. We're going to use this example behind me, which is a Siemens SF6 breaker, and we'll show you how to mount this LDTT300 on this breaker. Our first step is always safety. So we want to ensure the breaker won't operate as we mount the transducer. We can verify this by checking the spring and seeing it in a discharge state. This is the transport case for the LDTT300. Within it is the transducer itself and some tools we use to mount it. First, we have the steel plate, which gives us four different positions that the transducer can be connected to. It gets connected to this plate by three screws going through the plate and into the transducer, fastening it. All of this gets packaged nicely into the transport case. And lastly, we have the communication cable connected from the transducer going to the TN3. To connect this cable, we will go from the right side of the LDTT300 to the top of the TN3. We have three channels we can connect to to accommodate for three transducers. To establish the connection between the TN3 and our laptop now, we will use this cable called the EtherCAT. This provides power and data communication to the TN3. We can find the connection point for the EtherCAT cable at the bottom of the TN3 device. So here we have our LDTT300. And this rod right here is adjustable. The position it's in now is used for transportation so that it doesn't lock out, fall out of this place and it's locked in. With it now loosened, we can raise it out of this position and move it to the necessary position to connect to the circuit breaker. Okay, so we're gonna mount the sensor to our steel plate here. And the first thing we need to do is loosen our adjustable rod, lift it out of its stored position and thread it through one of these holes. And now we'll take our three screws and tighten this steel plate against the sensor. There is also the possibility to exchange the flexible rod with your own connection rod. We can do this by loosening the rod through this black knob and freeing it from its locked position. Then I'm gonna unscrew the rod from its point of connection. You can see its point of connection at my left hand. We may have to do this in some cases for when the standard rod doesn't fit on your breaker and we need to replace it with a custom made rod. Once we have the standard rod out, we'll replace it with that custom made rod at the same connection point. And just like that, we're ready to go. Now that we determined the point at which we can mount our sensor onto the plate, you take your three screws and drive them in to the sensor here on the other side of the steel plate. So I'll go ahead and finish the mounting here. Make sure you get a nice tight flat surface against the sensor. And with our sensor now mounted to the steel plate, we can now mount this whole system to our circuit breaker. So now we're gonna mount the LDTT300 to our circuit breaker, which we first need to thread our rod and connect it to the circuit breaker system itself. And with that accomplished, we can go ahead and use these two C clamps that we have here to actually fix our LDTT300 to the circuit breaker. We already have one, so I'm just gonna go ahead and take this second one to ensure we have a nice tight squeeze against the circuit breaker plate. Okay, so we're gonna take our TN3 and hook it on 
to this elastic rope, which has a hook at the end of it. And we're gonna suspend it close to where our sensor is mounted on the breaker. So then we can run this TN3 up, pull the end of the rope back towards the plastic purple piece here. And there's a little spot where the rope sits in and locks into place, keeping the TN3 nice and suspended and secure. Then we can take this cable, which is connected to our sensor, and plug it in to one of our three digital channels up here. I'm gonna plug it into channel one. And if you notice on the end of this cable, there's a red dot that needs to be aligned with the arrow that's on the TN3 channel port here. And it plugs in like so. And now we're gonna finish our setup by making the necessary connections from the Sabano 500 to our breaker as well as the TN3. So let's go ahead and finish the setup for the TN3 first, which involves the EtherCAT connection from the Sabano to that accessory. So here we have our EtherCAT cable. And on this Sabano, we have four EtherCAT modules that we can use. I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in the first one here to the left. And I'll take the remote end, go to the bottom side of the TN3 and make our connection here as well. And this provides power and data communication from the Sabano to the TN3. The next step is to make our connections to the main contacts to the circuit breaker to the A-Row cable and ports here on the Sabano. So we have a cable dedicated just for those connections. So I'll go ahead and place A1, A2, A3, and AN. And these will go up to the three poles of our breaker. The last step is to make our connections from the B-Row of the Sabano to the control diagram, the necessary points of the control circuitry on the circuit breaker. So to operate the breaker, we're gonna have our trip, which is B1, our close, B2, and we're gonna use the black one, which is BN, our neutral. And now that we've established the necessary connections from the Sabano to our circuit breaker, we mounted the transducer, we connected the transducer to the TN3 and the TN3 to the Sabano. We're ready to perform our timing measurements. This is gonna involve the close open and the close open. And while we perform all these measurements, we're also gonna be able to assess the contact travel because we've set up this transducer uh, on our breaker as we did. And I'm gonna go ahead and queue up the close timing first in the software. And when I'm ready, I'll just press the start button on top and now we'll execute the measurement. With our measurement completed, we can open up in the PTM and go to the plot section here. And here at the top, we can find the status of our main contacts starting in the open position indicated by the thin green line, and then into the closed position with the red, yellow, and blue solid lines for each respective phase. Below that, we have our travel curve, which is showing how the contacts are traveling through from one position to the final resting position. And at the bottom, we have our coil current, which is the current that's being induced in the closed coil for this measurement. If we move over to the table now, we have some characteristics of our measurement, like the closing time, how well each phase was synced together, some contact travel characteristics like total travel, over travel and rebound, and the main contact characteristics, contact wipe, reaction time, and bounce time. Thank you all for your attention. We hope you found this video helpful as you attempt to mount your linear dead tank transducer to your circuit breaker. We look forward to seeing you again.